In a defiant challenge to federal authority, Chief Justice Roy Moore of the Alabama Supreme Court ordered Alabama's probate judges not to issue marriage licenses. I don't like to say anybody should be happy, but nobody's stopping them from living together. It's about the institution of marriage. And when that institution is destroyed, it's the basic building block for our society. The Supreme Court is the law of the land in America. It is designed to be the last legal stop in protecting the right of every citizen, no matter their race, creed, or sexual orientation. It is designed to be the arbiter by which states follow. But Alabama has become a ground zero in the continuing fight against gay marriage. Is this the beginning of a mini-revolution, or the last gasp of an effort to ban what many believe is an abomination? So let's look into this from the religion side of the issue first. Welcome to Midpoint. He, he is the judicial analyst for Focus on the Family, where he researches and analyzes legal and judicial issues related to Christians and the family. Bruce HouseConnect joins us today. Bruce, thank you so much for being here again. Uh, thanks, Ed. Thanks for having me. Bruce, let's get right to this then. Are you and others who are against gay marriage bigots? No, that's not the issue at all. The issue of marriage has to do with what's best for children. Uh, we believe that all people deserve respect, uh, whether they're LGBT or straight or otherwise. Okay, but then let's get back to this, because there are people who say that simply because you have a belief that they should not get married makes you an immediate bigot. Here's a note actually posted, said, anti-gay Christians, you have the God-given freedom and American right to believe whatever you want, but what sane person would argue against that and what sane person would argue against people being able to live their lives as they see fit? How would you answer? Well, anyone has the right to live their life as they see, as they see fit, but when they seek to change the law, then you're entering the realm of public policy, and the question is what's best for the society governed by that law, but whether it's the state or whether it's the federal government. And when you enter the arena of public policy, you have to look at uh, issues like what's best for children in that jurisdiction, not just what's best or what do adults want. Marriage is not about what adult desires are or want or should be uh, granted. Marriage is about recognizing an institution that raises the next generation in the best way possible. And we believe that's with a man and a woman as mother and father. All right. Now, again, I'm going to just give you a lot of the, the opposing angles here, and I'd like you to answer them because this is certainly where the war is here, where the battle is, if you will. There are those on the LGBT side who would say that these are loving parents. These are parents who care for their children, and these are parents who deserve to have the right and the opportunity to raise their children as they see fit. They would then fight against you on that and say they're just as good a parent as you are. Well, and certainly there are uh, loving LGBT parents. That's not an issue here, and we don't argue that. However, when you look at the uh, at children in general, and you look at marriage in general, the uh, social sciences says uh, over the years and decades that children do best in a family with a married mother and father. It's it's simply what happens. Uh, in society. Well, we're going to have to say that there are a number of studies who would argue against that as well that we have read, but we could get into studies here and we could go on and on for a long time here. When you continue to bring up, and this comes from the side who favors gay marriage, you bring up the fact of the children. They will say, why is it always about the children and why should not you as a parent, if you don't believe in it, why should you then not raise your child to say, this is not what we believe in, it is what they do, but is it not your responsibility then to bring what you believe is right to them and not let it be mandated by a law? Well, I will teach my children the, what, I, uh, what the Bible teaches about marriage. However, when society then reorders marriage and, and uh, decides that through the courts or judicial decree that same-sex marriage is now the law of the land, those decisions impact my children when they go to school, what they're being taught from kindergarten on, what they're being taught in, about sex education. Those types of decisions uh, implicate and affect my family and, and families across America. But they you still have the opportunity to teach your children coming home. It doesn't come down to the school. You have the right to teach your children what you believe is incorrect according to your teachings, correct? Well, of course that's true, but why should there be a competing source of education about marriage in the schools? Why should I be at odds with, uh, with what the schools are teaching? Does it not come down when... to freedom of choice then? Freedom of choice, yes, as long as that choice does not affect the rest of us. That's, that's the basic issue here. Okay, but that choice doesn't affect, they will say this choice only affects them and does not affect you if you teach your children a certain way to live. You see the dichotomy that we're talking about here, right, Bruce? 
Yeah, but it's a false dichotomy. We've seen across the country that the religious freedom of uh, wedding industry vendors like bakers and florists and wedding photographers, people are being fined in the thousands okay. of dollars. That is, that is a very different effort. Friends. You're right about that. That is a different effort. We're all out of time on this one. Bruce, trust me, we're going to have you back. We're going to continue this conversation. We thank you for your comments today. Thanks, Ed. Legal Side is next.